the what's the mystique of it? It doesn't do anything for you. It doesn't make you better. It doesn't make you feel good. None of it does, but it's your choice. I know. I just think it's crazy how people are allowed to get drunk and wasted and do whatever they want. And that's yeah, I look at this way. If they want to throw that money away, give it to me. I'll put it to better use. Absolutely. Now, being a veteran and dealing with veterans, I've seen what marijuana has done for veterans that suffer through yes. edibles, oils, lotions, and everything else just for them to be able to function on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, there's a great video on YouTube of a guy who has um, Parkinson's disease and he uses the marijuana tincture. He puts one drop under his tongue and within about five to 10 minutes, his shakes are completely gone and he's able to yeah. function. I just don't understand why we would ever want to take that opportunity away from anybody. Well, here's the funny part. If our government were to actually sit down with Native Americans and look at what they use for medicine, they would be shocked on how many natural plants have been able to handle so many different things that the Indians have used using the plants. Right. Well, unfortunately, the pharmaceutical uh, industry will not allow oh, no, that. They'd, they'd lose money. Well, maybe that can be a future topic that we could have, like, Let's talk about big pharma and medical care in the U.S. You know, let's let's have that as a, a panel discussion and maybe get some people in the chats who want to join in and give their yeah. two cents. I think that's a great idea, Joy. We should do that next time for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. I'd love to rip into big pharma. I really hey, would. Absolutely. Me too. Hey, baby, real quick. Um, do you have any other viewpoints on on Roe versus Wade do you have any as far as being a black woman in America I know you said you talked to you know your friends and stuff earlier today I mean what how are they feeling how are how are you really feeling about it we're really kind of like I said we're apathetic towards it we're just kind of like we tried to say something we we've been right. yelling and screaming and hollering about it we know it affects black and brown communities more but I'm going to be very honest. I think this time it's going to actually affect poor white communities even harder than it hits black and brown communities. Um, it's going to affect everybody. Well, that's an access. Is that an? Are you stating that as more of like an access thing because there's more whites in rural areas? I I think that some of these rural areas, like okay, so I I was online, and they said that in West Virginia there is a clinic that literally today had to call 70 women and say that they cannot offer them the procedure because they don't under they don't know how the law affects them right now and don't want to be held liable you know and and that's rural virginia those are these are you know if you keep going further up into these areas and i think african americans <laughs> i think that that we're kind of looking at it like we don't have any power to fix this. We, we genuinely feel that, and I hate that this is a going to have to be fixed on a white person level. Well, it sounds to me like a Homer Simpson doe moment. Do. I, well, I, hope, I hope that you guys can change your mind. I think that the more black policymakers, and I'm using the word black, hopefully that's okay. Cause you are saying, yeah, I don't care. Um, I think we need more black policymakers. We need more legislators that are black. We absolutely, and Hispanic and Asian and everything else. You know, sometimes I sit here and I'm like, I don't even know if I like being white anymore. And I know that sounds crazy, but it's like, who am I? You know, I, I know I'm not this hateful person. So it, it's hard to think about that, but we need you guys. We need you to come out in trove. But we don't Start even trust ourselves. Let me give you an example. As black women, we voted for Joe Biden over Kamala Harris, not because we believe that Kamala couldn't do it. We didn't uh -huh. believe that white people would vote for her. And we still feel that way. You know, you know what? It has absolutely nothing to do with her race for me. It's just, I don't really She like would not her. make a good president. She just doesn't really seem very, I don't know. She's just- She has no clue. <laughs> But well, I don't know about all that. But well, let's take Kamala out of it. We didn't vote for Cory Booker. We didn't vote for it. It's just yeah. I don't like I don't like his attitude. It's not it's not the it's not the race. It's the way that they talk. It's like I I, I love just, Cory Booker. Really? Yeah. I love Cory yeah. Booker. I he's think okay. he is such a kind person. And 
And honestly, I think that's not going to get him far is no, it's so kind. Yeah. You know, Maybe that's what like it is. Corey Booker and Andrew Yang. Is that correct? Yes. Uh-huh. I, I would like them as a team, but they're both so nice. You know, they're docile. Yeah. Yes. They're too docile. Um, well, but you got to look at one thing as the president of the United States, the biggest thing that weighs on their shoulder more than anything else is what would they do if they have to go to war? Yeah. And that that turns a lot of people's vote in one direction or another. Mm-hmm. Because as the president of the United States, it's his job, his ultimate goal and final say-so as to how to protect this country. And you got to look and ask yourself, is this person capable of making the right decision at the right time? Time. And you want the experience, and that's and why you tend to go for experience. Unfortunately, for he yeah. made a wrong decision at the wrong time, pulling out of Afghanistan. I don't think so. Mm-hmm. Wasn't that oh, Trump's that was, decision? Uh, yeah, no, it was. No, yeah, that, that was Biden's decision. No, 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 no. That was Trump's no, no, no. decision. He's no, the one. No, Biden pulled was- everybody out overnight. Uh, whatever. No, yeah, it was Biden. Biden it was Trump's idea. decision, but Biden didn't stop the decision. Right. No, and he should have. I think it was already, <laughs> for, as far as military goes, there was no way to stop that. It already half the half of them had already started going. But yeah. The, yeah. The, the biggest problem is, and I I don't know if Abbott had to deal with it being a um, ombudsman or not. Usually during a conflict. As you pull troops out, you also pull equipment out. You don't pull just the troops out and leave five billion dollars worth of equipment behind for the enemy to get a hold of it. You're I, I'm not sure how that works. I, I mean, I'm not sure how that worked at all. No, no I'm not 100% sure, but I mean, just based off of the earthquakes, I've you know the the footage of the earthquake quake that's already killed a thousand people. Um, they're using the helicopters to good use, at least. But the example is those helicopters got missile launchers on the side, with no missiles. Oh no, they got the missiles. Nah, they took no. They took all the live ammunition. No. Come on, they're, we're not that stupid. No, they took all we're the live ammunition. Stupid. Yeah. No, that equipment should have been left behind. Well, and the way I'm they glad, the I'm way they ex- the way they exited was a, a, a big big issue. I well, think that people- one of the things we have to look at, though, is that a president is still a human being. So they're not going to be like, we. I, Perfect. Like, and I think one of the weird things about us as Americans is that we did not want a king, but we keep looking for one. Oh, God, no. But we keep looking for this perfect being, and nobody's going to make everything perfect. Nobody's going to make the right decision on everything. Can I, I you know... I can't imagine being a president, no matter if you were Trump or if you were Biden or, you know, whoever. I can't imagine having such a burden on our show, on your shoulders. And so I give it to any of them that can handle that burden as long as they handle it in a rational way. Oh, right. They, they don't support that burden alone because the president himself cannot declare war without the backing of Congress and the Senate. Yeah, that's scary, because Congress is going to be really fucked up soon. It already is. What are you talking about? It's going to be worse. Why? Because it's going to be Republicans? No, <laughs> Probably. because it's, it's not. No, I don't mind Republicans. It's going to be crazy ones. They're all crazy. You know, the, I think the, the GOP is slowly, and I know it's going to take a long time, but just based off of kind of the snub they gave to what's-his-face wheelchair, um, what's his name? The one in the wheelchair. Cartwright. Yeah. Yes, um, him and I think Marjorie Taylor Greene starting to kind of feel a little bit of it. Oh, no, no. She, oh, she almost vote. got herself hung. She's crazy. I, She's I got 70% of the vote. I doubt she'll still be here, be there. No, I, I don't mean locally. I just mean within the Senate and in Congress itself, just the, the other members. I, I, I think that, I mean, anything can happen. I mean, I know that this isn't a TV show or movies, but... There's definitely a lot of sneaky crap going on behind the scenes that we don't know about. So, well, that Who trial knows? she just went through hung her career. What what trial? What are you talking about, Jeff? You you didn't hear about the Marjorie Taylor Greene trial? 
Oh, when she was being questioned about J six. Yeah. That you know what? I, I, I'm going to be very honest with you again. I kind of put that stuff aside as much as I could for a little while. I doubt I like take a peek into it. And then I, for my own sanity, I, I retreat backwards. So I kind of missed that one. I think. Well, that trial killed her career. Well, but you're, the, the problem is there's so many people that still are going to support her no matter what the facts are. And I think it is up to the responsible Republicans to, you know, whoever thought I would miss moderate responsible Republicans, but I long for those days, you know. I, I know it's we sad. We need that on both I sides. This is Mitt Romney. Yeah. We, we need that on both sides, not just one. We need responsible Democrats and responsible Republicans on both sides working together for what's best for America. And unfortunately, we don't have it. No, because everything now is just about the next election cycle. Yeah, the word about midterms. Well, and unfortunately, in the American culture, the ones who are the most entertaining, the craziest, they get all the news media time. You know, kind of, Jeff, when you were asking earlier about why do we pay uh, pro athletes this amount of money why do we pay you know military teachers essential workers this it's it's the culture we live in you know we love entertainment and ones with the reasonable voices they don't make the headlines okay can i ask you all of you four ladies what you thought about obama as a president i liked him but i'm going to be honest with you he pissed me off sometimes he will um, be remembered for Obamacare, and for that, I say bravo. Yeah, absolutely. I liked Obama. And again, this is where I've watched some of the old interviews that Obama did. I'm like, why didn't these make headlines? You know, because he was soft-spoken and reasonable. I'm like, wait, I don't ever remember hearing him say this. Um, you know, And again, it just didn't make it. I'm going to tell you why. There's a reason why. Obama had a lot on his shoulders. And I, I my dad was explaining this to me. And I, I really had to think about it. Because I was coming at it like, well, I'm really angry that he didn't do some of the things that he promised. And he said, you have to understand, Obama's goal was to get through the presidencies. And because his goal was to get through the presidencies, he could not rock the boat as much as we thought he could. Because... He wants to make sure that there's a second Obama. You know what I mean? So, and, and that really resonated with me because it took a little bit of my anger out because a lot of black people felt like, hey, Obama, you're there, fix it. Well, yeah. I think it's the ultimate um, form of, you know, black tax having to work twice as hard and be twice as educated uh, you know, as your white counterparts. And I think, yeah. But, but is all of this happening because we had Obama? Judged. But is all of this happening because we had Obama? Is this a backlash to yes. Obama? No. Absolutely. No. no. The reason I ask that question is I don't know if you ever heard of Obama's thesis from college. Yes where he talked about how to take a country and make it a dictatorship. I think that the thing is, is that you have to understand everyone evolves. If I had to go and live through every college paper that I ever wrote, oh my God, God. Yeah. yeah. Well, the problem is his thesis, his second term and going into Biden is following that thesis so close. It's scary. No, I don't think so. I think no. he was very much non-dictatorship on pos on point. Matter and of fact, a lot of the things that he went for, he just agreed with Republicans. And just because it was Obama, they disagreed with him. And had nothing to do with that. But the problem is, Biden right now is nothing but a puppet. He's Sorry, not the one the strings. Just, the man has been in Washington, D.C. for 47 years. He passed one bill. They got turned down. That's the only thing he ever did. That doesn't make him the president. right candidate for a president. Oh, you do understand that he helped the Lily Ledbetter go through. That was his bill, right? 
No, he was he was a backer on that bill. His bill, his no, bill it was got his turned bill. down. No, that was his bill. Okay, he passed one bill in forty seven years. There's a whole bunch of other bills that he was actually supportive of. But the man in forty seven years hardly did anything. The... Yes, please. Um, I'd like to insert, and I think it was Joy that kind of brought it up a little bit, and I wanted to explore it a little bit further. I have went back and doing kind of a little research on these extremist groups and when they appeared. And do you know when they appeared? Hmm. 2011? You know he, when Ob Barack Obama was elected. Yeah. Now tell me that Barack Obama didn't face pressure from people and people who absolutely hated him because he was black. I don't know if it was because of his skin color or because of what it's, he was trying was to do. Absolutely. Skin absolutely color. because of his skin color. They'll tell you themselves. Mitt Romney basically said it that nothing yeah. he could says I'm gonna I'm gonna let him have anything through. He was very clear. Well that just goes to show where where Mitt Romney's mind is. I mean, even, some, even some even some black people have come out and said the only reason they voted for him was because he was black. I mean, they're being honest. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, was, it had nothing to do with his policies, and it was simply because he was black. Which, hey, go for it. But it go, you know, it went both ways. And well, I have, to, I have to tell you, during two thousand and eight, I did not vote for him for the primary. Hmm. I did not vote for. I voted for Hillary Clinton. Me too. And I know lots of black people who didn't. We waited and I'm gonna say, we were pragmatic. And it, something about black women is that we're very pragmatic. We waited to see would the tide turn in his favor. And if so, we were fine. But we did feel that Hillary Clinton had that a much, she, she had more experience, mm -hmm. you know? And I felt that she, out of all the people running had the most experience and she knew the ins and outs the most so i voted for hillary clinton i remember Ew. being late laid out by other black people like how could you not vote for obama right but okay, right yeah it almost became something where it was almost as though you had to do it because you were black right and how i didn't do you, how do you figure hillary clinton had more experience oh my god what hasn't she had experience with and let me just before we go there jeff can I just say something? And this is going to sound funny. Let's pretend Hillary Clinton has pulled off all the things that the right said that she has pulled off. Honey, if she did, I want her for president because she's amazing. <laughs> uh, okay. the, the reason I'm asking that question is, A, she was the first lady of um, Arkansas and the United Arkansas. States. Yeah. And then she was the first lady of the United States. And then she was the secretary of state. Senator. For New York. New York don't right. count. <laughs> yeah, they do. I think that there's, a, the senators. there's a vast information about what Hillary Clinton. I, I, I really liked Hillary Clinton because one of the, the biggest things that I liked about Hillary Clinton at the time was her work with African-Americans in South, South Carolina with the housing busting. She did that. She was like 22, and I find that you know admirable. I, I I think that she was brilliant, and I think that one of the things that they did was look at her. Newt Greenridge looked at her and said she was, is a is a problem, and started mm -hmm. their campaign to destroy her early on. Yeah, I absolutely agree. They well, did, but they she did. was supposed to be the shoe in when Donald Trump ran for his first office, and I still think that backfired. Won. I still think she won. Nah, she lost. Yeah, I still think she won, and I think that but, what we're looking at is all the stuff that happened with J six and 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 things that were won. I think that there's a possibility that she had. Uh, I, I agree with Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter said that he believes that she actually won. Well, I believe with Jim, I believe Jimmy Carter too when he made the comment that he likes Biden. Biden is making him not look like the worst president ever. Now Trump does that. So did yeah. Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter, no. was, he was not a great president. Well, Jimmy He's Carter used to be person. known as the worst president until Biden. That's Trump. No, 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 no. In history, if you look at the presidents, I can't remember who it is, Thoreau or something. There is one that was really bad. Yeah. No, no 
my big, I, I think my biggest thing against Hillary Clinton was she turned it a situation that shouldn't have happened into something that got a lot of people killed. And what was that? Benghazi. Yeah, let me explain Benghazi. I'm going to tell you, my cousin's husband, okay, when they were young, my husband's, my cousin's husband went to Africa and was part of an African embassy that also was bombed and he died. And that was under Bush. Mm -hmm. And so the bottom line is, is, and I'm going to be honest, as a military, you cannot save everyone in the military. I know people want that to be, and I want... But that's something that when you go into the military and you sign that dotted line, you must understand. And Christopher Ray understood that immensely. Matter of fact, he wasn't even supposed to be there, but he insisted on being there because he loved those people so much. So, yes, did it happen? Yeah. Yeah. Do we wish that she could have done something to make it better? She could have. Yeah. It, whether she could or she couldn't. The bottom line is that they are not perfect. Just like we said about other people, they're going well, to make mistakes as president. Well, but she wasn't president. She was secretary of state and she knew and what was going on. they're going to make mistakes as secretary and of state. she was texted by the M ambassador in Benghazi about what was going on and waited until the next day to tell Obama about it before anything was done. By that time it was done, over with, and they were dead. Whether it's true or not true, the bottom line is is that that's one incident in her history. That's a big incident. 13 people died. There are other incidents where presidents have had people die, and it's not as big. There, I, I don't know how you look at it, but so me being in the military, I look at it this way. One death is a big issue. Well, I'll tell you something. The really weird part about it is my dad used to say, when my dad used to go on the ships, and he was on a ship, and basically he was on one of those that had to go and um, retrieve people from an, an embassy. Yeah. Those kind of missions back then, they weren't public knowledge. <laughs> Things like this happened all the time. It just wasn't public knowledge. You know what I mean? And, and he said to me, he goes, I don't understand. That wasn't public knowledge. When your cousin died, he was one of 20 that died. It wasn't public knowledge. You know what I well, mean? Uh, but her as a Secretary of State, she had the power to call in troops to help back them up. They're, and they would have been there within they, three hours. They still said that they wouldn't have been there in time. They would have been there in three hours. Whether they would or they wouldn't, it still doesn't define her as a person. I don't okay. think. So I have found, while you guys were talking, the worst president that I think was Andrew Johnson after Lincoln. I yes, that's, like, that's possible. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's it. The worst president was definitely him. He was horrible in a lot of things. Well, everything he did has consequences to this day. So, in my opinion, Andrew Johnson, the worst president. Okay. Yes. That works. I mean, Andrew Johnson actually, Trump beats him. And that's hard for me to say. Well, that's the, best, that's the good thing about human nature. We're all different. We all have yeah. our ideas. And how people perceive them is what makes them who they are. Whether you accept them as what they are or put blinders on and go through the motion and stand your ground, that, that defines who you are as a person. Yeah. Like I said at the beginning of all this, I stand in the middle. I, I listen to both sides. And somewhere in the middle is the truth. It's like that elephant story, you know, one person was blind and you're touching one part and another part and you don't know what it is. You know, I mean, I, I agree with you. And I think that just because somebody's on the other side of the aisle doesn't mean I shouldn't listen to them. Well, like I said, a lot, a lot of people listen, but they don't listen with an open mind. If that makes sense. I mean, I think we should listen to an open mind. I mean, honestly, I think that Congress in general right now, the fact that they cannot sit down in a room That'll and have a happen. civil conversation is ridiculous. <laughs> I, actually, I, I'd like to see them all sit down in a room. Okay, can I just say, this is, sounds horrible, but I would like to see like AOC and Marjorie Taylor Greene in a room together. Go for it, dudes. Just go. Box it out. I don't know. What I like to do is get a bunch of water balloons, 
put them all in the Senate chamber on the main floor, put the same amount of water balloons on the left side as the same amount of water balloons on the right side and tell them, okay, you guys got however long until the balloons are gone, have at it. Let us know when you're done. We'll open the doors. <laughs> well, something needs to change because the current state of affairs, we have 30 people living in a parking lot because they have felt so marginalized in this country. Yeah, and that's the thing is that I know that I joke about the 1776, but I do feel that they feel marginalized. And as someone who has felt marginalized, I feel compassion for that. But here's the big problem. They want people to come out and join them and understand that. As a veteran, I, I fully understand that. But at the same time, when you badmouth people, you're trying to get to join you, you kind of defeat the purpose. Well, they kind of limited who could join them, too. They've kind of made it so that it's it's not open to other people. I found this whole movement because I live in the area and they were going to be in my way to go take my kids to D.C. But then I was fascinated by them. And I actually liked Brian Brazi. Was that his name? Yeah. I actually liked some of the things that Brian Brazi said. They're only 30 minutes away from me. And I actually liked the fact that he wanted to make it non-political. He wanted to get some of those things out of it. He wanted to kind of keep it open for all kinds of people to be there. And so he kind of had me for a little while. So I watched, the first stream I watched was Sasnak and Wizzy. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yay, yay, okay, this is kind of cool. Then somewhere they turned this left turn and it became religious and and about abortion and all these other things. I was like, wait, what happened to the mandate thing? Whoa, hold up. That happened when they changed their mind and decided to go over to California. Yeah, before then I was like, oh, I'm not into everything, but I kind of get what they're saying. Okay, I don't agree completely, but I kind of get it. Uh, I, I think the decision to go to California flipped a lot of people. It really did. That move did more damage than it did good. Because everybody saw them at Hagerstown, saw them going in D.C., thought, okay, here we go. We're going to get something done. And then out of the clear blue, they're like, well, we're going to California, but we're going to come back to D.C. And when they, the day they left at Hagerstown, everybody's like, what? Were we you there? I, I've, I've been, I was watching the convoy since day one. Really? Yeah. See, I didn't start watching them until they entered Hagerstown. I started watching them when they left Alto Alonso, California. I didn't even know they existed until they entered Hagerstown in my own biosphere of, of, of you know, them being in my way to get take my children to D.C. Oh, um, a lot of that was because they really, they were trying to get the message out, but they weren't getting the message out. A what do you think was their no downfall? Communication. Communication. Like what? Well, as they were coming across the first time, they were actually communicating with the American people, letting them know where they were at, what route they were taking, what they were going to do, why they were doing it. And then when they went back to California and came back to, back out the second time, they didn't do that. Uh, they were trying to keep everything hush hush. Yeah, but wasn't they doing what they're doing that because we had and you know dumb groups that wanted to. You know, pull back uh, a little bit. I, I don't believe in this Antifa. Would be a... I mean, I, I don't either, but I do want to defend them in that manner that it felt like, you know, they were getting poked at by some stupid people. It was on both sides. And that's sad to say. It, it, they're being poked at from both sides. So I'm just curious. What did you, what did people think was actually going to happen if they did something in D.C. if they had already done the same thing in Ca in Canada and nothing happened there either? Well, the difference between us and Canada, A, two different governments, B, the way their government's run versus the way our government's run are totally two different ideas. In Canada, you don't vote for the president. You vote for the party whether it be a Democratic Party or a Republican Party, and the party 
chooses what's inside itself who's going to step up and be the prime minister. Whereas here, we vote for the actual president itself. We don't vote for the party. We vote for the one person we think would be the good, the best president at the time, whether it yeah, be a Democrat or a Republican. I get that, but I still don't understand what the end goal was to go into D.C. and try to get them to do what? Well, the first time they were going to D.C. was to lift the Emergencies Powers Act and lift the mandates. Okay. And, and that, I get was, that, that, was the, that was their initial goal. I get that one. Now, I, I think that's when I was like, okay, I'm on board. But when they went back to California to fight some laws in California and then came back somewhere along the line, that goal changed. And everybody's like, okay, then what's the goal now? Do you think they were scammed at all? Without looking at the books, I, I can't say yes or no. That, that's a fair answer. Because the books w would tell it all. Well, but, I, but I do know some of the TPC lied about what was collected one night to go back to Hagerstown. Because some leader says, well, we didn't ask for $15,000 when in actuality they did on four different streams. That was just a clusterfuck completely. I think that listening to your chat is kind of stupid. <laughs> but the, the, the biggest problem is, is the leaders were going to dismantle the convoy in California before it came back to Hagerstown. They should have done that, though. That would have been yes, more Yes, they honest. should have. Why they didn't, I don't know. That would have been honest. That would have been the smarter move. Yeah. Well, maybe on a... Maybe we can get some of the people that were in the convoy on a panel one night if there's anyone out there that wants to and kind of ask these questions. How did they feel about it? Did they feel they were, you know, the people who were there? Yeah, but I think that I think that they've all kind of run away from it, like Marcus and Mike and Brian. I think that they've all kind of run away from it. And I think that they're afraid to be associated with this 1776 whatever it is I, think well, that I lost respect for marcus the day they told everybody really that man stood at that trailer and said absolutely not one word yeah i saw that that was horrible <sighs> and him being one of the original leaders he should have said something but he just stood there and said absolutely nothing yeah that's when i lost respect for him all right, y'all, I've got to climb out because I've got to actually feed dinner to my son. Yeah, I was just going to say I'm about to get off. So thank you, everyone. This was great. And uh, anyone out there in the chat, feel free to get on next time. It's not as scary um, as it was the first time I got on. So thank you, everyone. <laughs> Bye, guys. Have a Bye. good night, Joy. What's your idea on the convoy to J3? Dean, I don't know if it was a sole proprietorship with it the way it was set up because it was a 501c3, which means they had to have a board of directors. But the question is, who was the board of directors? Well, unfortunately, term right man, they didn't have to worry about that because DCPD took care of that problem for them by blocking off the exits and it cost two people their lives. Hey guys, I'm leaving. Nice talking to you both.
You have a good night, J3. You too. Bye-bye.